I look like a crazy person <laughs> in the lighting. It doesn't look like that in the lighting. I promise it'll look better in a second. Okay, so <laughs> this looks so bad. This is how it always starts though and everyone's always like, you look decent. So like, <laughs> I promise it gets better from here. Cause like, here's the thing. I have a spray tan on so my face kind of looks crazy. And then I just put the lightest um, concealer ever all over um, all of my blemishes, which is this, <laughs> all of my face. So I promise that once I start bronzing it and like do eyes and stuff, it looks good, I swear. I kind of cake on my makeup. And I know that like you shouldn't really admit to that or something, but like I just do. Like it's, if I'm gonna do my makeup, here's my problem. I won't film because I don't wanna do my makeup because it takes me a while. Because if I'm doing my makeup, I'm gonna cake it on. I can't just do like mascara like my friend does that and it makes me so angry because I'm like, I wish I could. But then I have to like fix everything I feel like and make everything look good because you don't want, I don't know. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, I got dumped on New Year's Eve. <laughs> so I've been a little sad lately. Um, but I think I just like I it was a really interesting relationship. We would fight and he would dump me a lot. Um, so I decided that this time I'm not gonna go back to him. Um, so I think that is what upset me more than like the breakup itself because like I've done that like 13 times with him. Um, so it was just kind of a thing where I had to realize like, you know what, somebody has to stop this cycle. It's probably not going to be him. I mean, unless he decides like, ah, F her, I don't want her anymore, but I'm cute. So <laughs> I'm saying that because I look like this. I was talking to my friend Stasia and she's the best. Like I love her to death and she has horses and stuff. Like she's super cool. And I was talking to her and I was like, you know, what's weird is um like boys like they're just stressful and she recently like got out of a relationship not gonna go into her detail <laughs> but she did and she just moved back here from texas and it's kind of been cool because i've been able to see her so much um but i was talking to her and she said something that really resonated with me and i think this will help any girls out there or guys like your friends are your friends like and i think the problem that most people have or that i have had is i would look at like my boyfriend or like a guy i was talking to as like my soulmate and i'm like oh my god they could be the one but then i realized like honestly boys come and go it's just it's the truth it's kind of sad boys come and go though so i think what we have to keep looking at is or like looking into or thinking about is who's there when we need it our family and our girlfriends or boyfriends like if they're your friend but i've had a lot of those and then they profess your love to you their love to you and then it's like awkward um but i just think that we all need to be real and realize that our girlfriends are our soulmates and then boys are just for fun and when you say it like that Obviously, there's like a such thing as love and stuff, but when you say it like that, it literally makes you feel so much better because then there's no pressure. Like, yeah, this boy could be the love of your life and you could fall in love with them, but they could also never talk to you after today. And that's fine because you still have your girlfriends because my girls, I know, are the ones that I count on to be with me or there for me when things go wrong. So I think we just all have to stick together. They're the ones that are gonna be there for you if you go through a breakup. Girls just rock, honestly, and I think we all need to stick together. <gasps> Ooh, I have another thing to talk about. <laughs> this is, okay, this is what being my friend is like, so I thought like, hmm, let's give everyone a little insight into how actually talking, because everyone's like, I wanna be a friend, but like, this is, this is it. This is gonna bronze me up, hopefully. Um, so. Pet fest. I know personally, there's a lot of drama in the pet tube community. I made one video on drama and it was only because I felt passionate about the animals. Hashtag I love mice. But what do you guys think? Should I go to pet fest? Because I want to. Um, and I've talked to them a little bit and I think I want to because 
all I care about really is you guys. At the end of the day, like, if you guys are going to Pet Fest, I'm going to Pet Fest. Even though I'm not a creator, but, like, I talked to them and they said I could be, which is, like, super dope because I don't have that many followers. Um, or subs or whatever it's called. So I was like, okay, that's super dope. I'm down. But would you guys go? Because I don't want to go. I think what I'm nervous about is, like, I'm the smallest one there. So, like, <laughs> I'm not the... I just, I'm not, like, as big as everyone else. So I get, like, insecure and I'm like, is it even worth it for me to go? But then, like, I want to meet everyone because I watch everyone's videos and stuff, too. But with all the drama and stuff, it's like, is this just going to cause drama? But I honestly, like, I guess my viewpoint is I don't really care about the drama at all. I try to stay out of it. Um, I don't really, I'm not really friends with anyone in the PetTube community at all. Like, I'll, I'll talk to them sometimes, but I'm not really friends with them at all. I'm kind of just do my own thing, post some videos, and that's about it. Um, but, with that being said, like, I want to meet you guys, but I wouldn't go if you guys aren't going, you know? Because then it wouldn't be worth it because I don't really know anyone. I'm kind of awkward. I think Liv's going to go with me if I go and my little sister, Callie, which you guys have seen on this channel. So, that would be fun. See, I just, like, I'm, like, I literally just do that, which would be fun. I don't know, but if you guys want me to go, I'll go for sure. I literally look like a ghost, but I don't in real life, so this is making me angry, but I'll show you later. Um, but what do you guys think? I guess I just want your opinions because you guys are my best friends in the whole entire world. Um, but I'm definitely down to go, honestly. I'll go. It's just, do you guys want me to go? Should I go? Is it worth it? Okay, my ex, this video is just me talking about my ex, my ex got me this thing, it's like a huge, big hoodie, but like, it's like a Snuggie meets a hoodie, and I bike dogs in it, and it's so good for when I get up early, because I get up early every day, pretty much, um, because that's my life, because I have a bunch of dogs and animals, and oh my god, it's a life changer, like, it's a game changer, I'm obsessed with it, I just think that it's honestly the best thing I've ever gotten. And it sucks because every time I put it on I think about him, but it's one of my favorite things in the whole entire world. And I could buy myself another one, but I don't think that would change who I think about when I put it on. So everyone help. What's what's the thing? Because I have to wear it. Like it's so comfortable. Um Yeah. Oh. Let me look at what people assume about me. <laughs> I haven't done that at all. I'm just talking to you guys. Somebody said, Do you ever think a dog is aggressive? Okay, honestly, 1-5% to 5 of dogs are actually aggressive. A lot of them will just bite because it works or because um, they've been dominant in the past. I think it's something that very rarely is a dog actually aggressive. Um, so, it's most... Oh, look. I look so much better with an eyebrow done. Wow. Do I look different? I mean... <laughs> Um, I don't think most dogs are aggressive. Obviously, there are some aggressive dogs, and that's sad when dogs are aggressive. And you just have to put them down because they're a danger to themselves and to society. But I think that most dogs aren't. And so that's good because you don't have to put most dogs down because most dogs aren't aggressive. I'm going to spill some tea. And I don't like to talk about this too much because I know how controversial it is. And I know that it's really hard to understand unless you have a really in-depth conversation about it. So, positive reinforcement training. People ask me what kind of training I do. I don't class my, classify myself as a positive reinforcement trainer because I like to focus more on dog psychology. And I think it sounds super good. And if you don't break it down, it's really hard to understand why you'd use corrections but here's my the way I train my eyebrow looks funky the way I train is I'll give treats and use like positive reinforcement when the dog's learning a behavior and then I'll use pressure and release or corrections when a dog is um, getting corrected out of the behavior I think corrections are bad when you haven't practiced the state of mind that you want the dog to go into when you correct them. So a lot of people will give corrections and not really practice the state of mind so the dog's confused when you're correcting them. But if you practice on a daily basis what you want the dog to do and what you expect from the dog, then there's like a clear 
understanding with you and the dog. And so I think it sounds bad when you're like, I don't like to use treats for this, but honestly, when a pit bull or a Doberman or something like that is biting me, like, I'm not gonna like redirect them with a treat. I'm gonna be like, no, we don't do that here. <laughs> we're not doing that. This is not what we're about. I'm sorry. So that's just the thing. And honestly, with positive reinforcement training, this is gonna be really controversial. And I already know the comments are gonna be like, you're awful, you abuse <laughs> dogs. But my the way I feel, I'm honestly just real with you guys, so I'm just gonna be 100. Um I think that positive reinforcement training is awesome in the learning phases. But unfortunately, a lot of positive reinforcement trainers I have worked with, and this is just my experience, is that they have to they have a higher rate of having to like put down dogs because they can't fix a, aggressive behaviors because you can't fix that with positive reinforcement training most of the time, not all the time, most of the time. Positive reinforcement sounds really good, but it's not all that it's cracked up to be. And that's honestly the problem with like a lot of the main brands that teach dogs, like PetSmart and Petco. Um, they are great. Sometimes they're kind of controversial, but the problem is they're such a big brand that they have millions and millions and millions and probably billions of people that go there. So they can't do any training with corrections and stuff. So their training is limited to positive reinforcement training and basic stuff, which ultimately people pay for because they're a big brand. But the only reason they do that is because they have so many people that watch them train every day. And if you don't understand what's happening, you might misunderstand what the trainer's doing. So I think, honestly, the solution, who's calling me a random person, that's cool. I think the solution to that is to just educate people on what you're doing with the dogs. Because dogs are animals, and they're pack animals, and they do really well with... Um, you taking charge and being in the lead. They want to follow you and you want to be the type of person that makes them follow you. So it's just, it's not like a force thing. It's just like if you're a leader and if you correct them like a, another dog would in that situation, like, and something they understand, this is so gross, sorry, um, and do something they understand, then you're going to be golden and that's going to be the easiest way to do it. But definitely in the learning phases, I'll use positive reinforcement. Like, if they're learning tricks and stuff, 100%. But if I'm correcting a behavior, I'm not gonna crack out some treats unless it's something where the dog does really, really well with redirection. And it honestly depends on the dog too and what you're working with. So it's really not like one training style fits all dogs. And I think I have a different opinion than most on that. And that's definitely not the popular opinion. So thought that would be interesting to talk about. Should I, where's my highlight? Hmm. Where is it? I'm gonna die if I don't have it. If you wanna have an opinion on something, I think you should do more research than to just be like, oh, this sounds better. Because I think that's the thing, that positive reinforcement 100% sounds better, but it's not all it's cracked up to be at the end of the day. And I think that's what people don't understand. And I think it would be actually really interesting. And if you want a video on that, I will do a video. Or like, I actually, I'm not really planning my thoughts here. I'm just kind of talking like you're a friend. So I'm not being like politically correct or anything. But if you want like a written down, planned out video about it, if you're interested, I'll 100% do one and actually elaborate and make sure you understand what I'm saying. I take CBD because I have super bad anxiety and depression. And a lot of people don't know that. Um... But, I do, and I come off like an extrovert and everything, and I've tried a lot of anxiety pills and antidepressants, and they are so hard on your body, and like, I have not done well with them at all. So, my dad actually owns a company, or runs a company, should I say, um, and he came out with CBD mints, which CBD is different from weed because I would never smoke. I'm like weird about like drugs and alcohol. And I know like people are like, weed isn't a drug, but like to me, like, no, I can't. I would never smoke. That's just me personally. Um, so I was like super weird. I was like, I don't wanna take CBD, but it's actually, I've researched it. It's all natural. So they take out the THC, which 
THC is the part that gets you high and they only give you the calming effect. So I've been taking that three times a day and oh my god, I wish I would have found this sooner because my anxiety is so much better. And yeah. Also, something I learned in 2018 is that if people are meant to be in your life, they will be. And what I mean by that is oh, fricked it up. <laughs> Do you see that? Shout out to you, Katie. Oh crap. Okay, so what I mean by that is if somebody cares about you and loves you, the best thing to do if like your relationship isn't good is let them go. And I know it sounds like I'm talking about a boy, but I'm not. <laughs> my example for this is Liv. And Liv's one of my closest friends. Hold on, my eyeliner's killing me. Okay, help. And the thing about Liv that not a lot of people know is we've had a very on and off again relationship. And this has kind of spiraled. We used to fight all the time when we were younger and friends. But what's happened is we had the three musketeers. It was me, Liv, and my bestest, bestest friend for life that I thought we were gonna be besties forever because I had known her since I was four. Um, and we were like besties for the resty. And Liv and I would always fight because this girl, would pin us against each other and we just put it together like a little bit ago. It was so stupid. It took us so long to put it together. And I think my lesson from that is not to be as trusting with people. And also <laughs> saying from a girl that already has trust issues or coming from a girl saying from, what am I doing? Um, and also always think your own thoughts. Like even if you're really close with someone, never let them like decide how you feel about something. Cause pretty much, here's an example. What she'd do is she would be like, so Liv got a fish tank right after I got into like all the betas and everything. And it, I didn't get bothered by it. I was like, girl, she loves me. She's like, she's trying to be me. It's fine. Like she's copying me, whatever. Like I just, I wasn't bothered by it. Like I, I love when people copy me. Personally, like, it makes me feel good. I'm like, oh, I'm doing something right. Like, they like my taste, whatever. My bestest, bestest friend was like, can you believe that she copied you? And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, she copied me? And she's like, yeah, doesn't that bother you? And then all of a sudden I was like, maybe it bothers me. And then I was like, yeah, it does bother me, actually. So then I was, like, all pissy about it. And she was like, you should make a subtweet. Girl, I made a subtweet. I said, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery but this girl's taking it too far or something then I sent it to me or sent it to Liv and was like can you believe she's that upset over a fish tank and I was only upset because like hyping me up to be upset and so I think you just have to have your deepest you have to like keep sorry you have to have your own opinions and if you're upset about something that's fine but if you're not don't let somebody else make you upset about it but the lesson I learned is Liv's now my best friend and that girl is out of our lives. <laughs> so, real ones always come through. It's a thing. Oh my god, my camera's gonna die. Don't die. We've made it so far. Okay, so I put some mascara on. Here's kind of how we look after the get ready with me. Oh, you're stuck. I have to kind of tame my hair a little bit more, but... Um... This is how I look. Here, I'll go into natural daylight so you can kind of see better. This is it, babes. This is all I got. <laughs> I'm trying to like show you, but like it's awkward, so. This is how I look. I know I'm filming like crap because I feel awkward. But yeah, I love you. I'll see you next video. Like and subscribe. Let's talk more. Do you like videos like this? If not, I'm fine. I kind of had fun making it though because I felt like I was talking to a friend when I was because I was talking to you, but like you weren't responding. So that was awkward. Next time respond maybe. Bye.